This is a follow-up video to a video I did earlier about the FDOS operating system. FDOS was the first operating system that Southwest Technical shipped with their first floppy disk system, the MF68. FDOS was a very simplistic operating system modeled very closely after Northstar BOS over in the S100-8080 world. Um, they only shipped FDOS for about six to nine months, after which they began shipping the Flex operating system, which we've covered in other videos and is much more powerful. So FDOS kind of quickly faded away, but it's been worth looking at to learn more about the history of the floppy disk with Southwest Technical Products. Now the reason we're doing a follow-on is because if you might recall in that other video, we had a problem with the assembler. When we would assemble a file, we could not then save the resulting object file. It would just crash the system. Well, a hobbyist has figured out what the problem was for me while he was busy trying to get FDOS to run on an emulator. And he used the nice tools you have in an emulator for debugging to find this problem and uh, let me know about it. So we're going to go ahead and boot DOS and let us see how the assembler actually writes files now. Um, by the way, um, if you haven't watched the original video in this series, I'd recommend watching that first. That'll give you good background of what we're going to do today because I'm not going to cover FDOS in any sort of detail today. All right, let's go ahead and uh, boot FDOS. You do it with the D command and swat bug. The files command shows us the files that are out there. All right, so um, CoRes is the co-resident assembler editor. If it's a system file with a dollar sign in front of it, all we have to do is type the name and it goes ahead and runs it. Now I have a source file out here that we're going to uh, assemble called demo.s, so we'll take a look at that in just a minute. So to run the co-resident assembler editor, we type co-res. Now co-res is basically how Motorola did their own um, resident assembler in their data books. You can see information about that. Um, and it also had that for Southwest Technical. Theirs ran from paper tape or cassette. They basically just slightly modified that to actually use disk I.O. instead of tape I.O., but it's basically the same tool. All right, so the assembler editor comes up in the editor to begin with, and using this is just like using basic line numbers, and it doesn't care uh, what you type in here. I can, whoops. So I can just type anything I want. Just like in basic type list, you want to delete a line, hit 20, return. So it's just like basic. You can insert lines just by giving it line numbers. You can resequence them and things like that. New command erases it. So anybody who could use basic could quickly use this editor. Good enough to get you going. Now let's go ahead and load the demo program. Again, instead of coming from paper tape, now this comes from uh, disk, so it's nice and fast. And the list command shows us this program. Now the whole program is... Um, using only a single space for indents instead of tab or multiple spaces. Multiple spaces waste a lot of precious memory and the program itself, CoRes, didn't do any tab expansion or anything and so um, no matter what you'd end up with just single space. I don't like the looks of this but that's pretty common with Motorola um, assemblers in the day. Even the one on Flex uh, didn't like tabs and all your source files look like that. All right, to assemble this we go to the assembler which is actually a separate section within the CoRes. And like most early Motorola assemblers, assemblers, we have to manually run the two passes. So 1P is running the first pass, which generates the symbol table and resolves all forward references. Second pass, I have several choices. 2L generates a listing, and this is formatted fairly nicely. So you can see what your program would look like. Um, 2T would actually um, generate a tape. 2P does a listing and punches a tape. Now, um, I didn't bother changing the nomenclature, but 2T now, instead of going to tape, is going to go to a disk file. So it's asking me for a file name. I'll give it a name of demo, and it is now writing that out to disk. And now it's allowing us to run second pass again if we wanted. So let's go back to FDOS. Now, the only way to do that is for me to ed exit to the editor, which is the X command from the assembler. And then the um, editor has a command called DOS, which actually just does a cold boot of FDOS. All right, so now if we look, we can see we have a new file out here called demo. It starts on track 13, sector 3, and it's two sectors long. Now, it only runs from 100 to 159, so it only needed one sector. Um, but obviously, it allocated some extra space like we talked about in the earlier previous video so that um, you have some room for growth in there. Now, one problem we have is that this last column is the execution address. It didn't know the execution address. You can't set it in the assembler. 
Um, it's not even on the end directive. Um, you, you can't set it. And so we're going to have to manually change this because that's the execution address of FDOS, not the program. Our program starts at 100, just like a lot of these others. Um, so to do that, we're going to have to manually change it. How would you go about doing that? Well, you can load demo into memory using the, the load command. So now it's in memory. So now I can just save it. It's asking me the address. We know it runs from 100 to 0159. And now here it's giving us an option to save. Oops, uh, let's see, backspace is control O, I believe. Oh, and that locks this terminal up. No, we don't want to do that. Okay, we've, we've seen that in previous videos. Let me do a video cut and get back to this point again. Okay, I've typed nothing more. I think that control O went to the southwest, I'm not sure, but let's hit return now and see what happens. Okay. So I typed control O, it went to the southwest technical and was interpreted as a delete. So we did get our 100 as the end address. Okay, so now we can run it. Again, since it's not a system file with a dollar sign, we have to type run in front. So this will load it and execute it. Asking for a message, repeat it six times, and it's back to FDOS. So that worked just fine. Um, now, once we have this file created with that right address, um, since the assembler doesn't do anything about um, updating the run address, as we saw, from now on, it'll just stay 100. So let's go ahead and load demo.s. All right, and let's uh, let's change something. Let's change uh, let's change this message prompt, just so we know we've done something different. Oh, now I can't type delete, so we're going to have to have that error in there. Just live. With it. Well, you know what? I'll type it again. I can't type delete. Am I going to delete six eighty? No, good. I need to learn to type. If I can't hit delete, I got to be more careful. Okay, please enter message there. All right, so now really the only thing we've changed is please, please enter message instead of just the word message. So now this program is longer, but if you recall, it had two sectors saved and we weren't even anywhere near one sector yet. All right, so we can save our source if we want. And the source file has some extra space as well, so it's it'll fit. So now we can assemble it. First pass, second pass. We'll go ahead and do the listing. Um, unfortunately, on this assembler, you can't suppress where it generates all the bytes, and nor does it put multiple bytes on one line. So you have these big gaps wherever you have messages. All right, so now let's go ahead and punch it. Well, not punch it, but generate our object file. Exit back to the editor. Exit back to FDOS. Now you can see here's demo still, exact same spot, except now it runs to 166 instead of 159, but it's still at 100. So we don't have to do that first step again. Once we've got it out there, then we can, um, we don't have to worry about doing that. All right, so let's run demo. And you can see we have our new message here. So that seems to run just fine. So that brings up the obvious question as to what was wrong with the version we were running in the previous video that is now fixed. And ironically, that problem ended up being my own doing to come to find out. I had to create a patch for CoRes and actually for FDOS itself that uh, took care of the fact that the disk controller I was using was not 100% compatible with the original DC1 uh, disk controller. And I put that patch in CoRes in a spot that I thought was safe, but it ends up that it gets clobbered. And the other hobbyists figured out uh, that it was getting clobbered and then also figured out a spot that was safe to put it in CoRes where it wouldn't get clobbered. And so now obviously everything works fine because before, by the time it was doing disk IO, that patch had been clobbered and the program jumped off into Never Never Land. All right, well, that does it for this video. I am going to take a look at another operating system here soon, CP68. And who knows, maybe some others after that. But that was another interesting 6800 operating system that would run on this Southwest technical computer. So be looking for that video to come out next.